I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we have the pleasure of introducing you to Ginny Gilman. She is the talented author of The Christmas Stowaway. It is a book inspired by the true story of a saw wet owl discovered in Rockabella Center's Christmas tree back in 2020. All kinds of crazy things happened in 2020, so why not an owl <laughs> in the Christmas tree? Ginny has crafted a heartwarming and captivating tale of Rocky's adventures as Rocky faces challenges from losing her home to evading predators. Readers of all ages will be enthralled by this delightful Christmas tale that emphasizes resilience, adaptability, and finding one's purpose. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like her by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing this beautiful book that both you and your children will love. This is a great story. Jenny, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. I thank you for having me. This was such a great idea you had. You had read news accounts, no doubt, of an owl that was found in a Christmas tree, the most iconic Christmas tree in the world. And you didn't let it stop there. You let <laughs> it spark your imagination and you decided to tell a story. Tell us a little bit about that process. Well, actually, I heard the original story on the Today Show. Carson Daly was talking about this little owl. Mm -hmm. And um, my husband said, that is really a cute story. I think maybe you should write a little tale about it. Mm -hmm. So I am in a writing class in Palm Desert at the Jocelyn Center. And I brought the story I wrote just a rough draft of the story. And my friend, Ruth Gray, she kind of was captivated with the story. And so she added some things. And so we collaborated and kind of embellished the real true story and made uh, Rocky a little bit more, you know, human, so to speak. And it uh, it's just been a, a delight. Absolutely, absolutely. Do you know what happened to the real life Rocky by any chance? Well, the real life Rocky was taken to a wildlife center and was treated and let go. So that's as far as we got in the story, but we embellished and had Rocky um, try to get back into his Christmas tree. Oh. And um, there's a cute, can I show you a picture that, sure. that I love? Um, well, and this first book of all, is just loaded. I with love Christmas the Christmas tree. Yeah. Um, Emily did a great job, but when Rocky tries to get back into the tree, this is kind of what happens. So I love that, that he can't quite fit in there. So actually, Rocky is a female. They discovered that at the Wildlife Center. So Wonderful. Tell me about your collaboration with Emily, the illustrator, and how you got these beautiful, classic Christmas pictures drawn and created? Well, after Ruth and I uh, wrote the story and the class at the Jocelyn Center really encouraged us to pursue, you know, publishing the story. I said, well, I need a, uh, an, an illustrator. And through a woman's group that I belong to, um, I knew that one of the women's daughters was an artist. And when I got back to Wisconsin, I contacted her in May and she decided that she was going to uh, do the illustrations for me. Our Emily is a very talented artist. Uh, it comes uh, by, I mean, through her mother and her grandmother. And she teaches science at Nina High School out here. So Wonderful. she does that and then she does art on the side. Well, she uh, could, I think, make art a full-time profession because the pictures in this book are wonderful. Tell me a little bit about your experience in New York City during the Christmas season. Have you ever been there? I know you're from Wisconsin and you spend time on the West Coast. So was this just out of your imagination or have you suffered through one of our bitter cold winters here in New York City? Um, no, I place? have never been to New York. I am um, I'm a real firm believer and watch the Today Show every every morning. Um, I, they're my friends, you know, um, 
Al Roker and Carson Daly and Savannah and Hoda. I love them. And that's the only way I've experienced New York. I would love to go to New York and, um, you know, just be, be there for the Christmas season. But I have never been there. I've been to LaGuardia Airport on my way to Europe maybe one time, but that's it. Well, I'm, you, I'm pretty, you, pretty much a Midwest girl. Yeah, well, since you've crafted this wonderful story about New York City, about its most iconic Christmas centerpiece, the Rockefeller Center tree, I think you need to come and watch it. And it is really spectacular. You know, some things don't live up to the hype, but to be there on a snowy evening at Christmas, I used to work at CBS and I used to walk from Grand Central Station across town. And every day during the Christmas season, I made sure I walked past the Christmas tree mm -hmm. because it is that spectacular. Well, I'm glad you memorialized it in your book. I know you were taking a writing class out West, which helped you during the process. So was this your first endeavor writing? Um, yes, to, to get something published. I mean, I was an elementary school teacher, so we did a lot of little projects in school and I, I wrote right alongside my students very often. But this writing class uh, just pushes me to write something every week. We meet every Tuesday and I love the class because it is a just a varied people. I think ages maybe 35 to 90 and they all have different backgrounds and we all write something that's, it's like a memoir, something that you know and we share it with the class and they're very kind and they usually give us some feedback to it, mm -hmm. always very nice. And um, so the story, like I said, that Ruth and I uh, finally came, uh, finally finished, they just encouraged us to get it published. And I self-published this book and I needed this is all new to me, totally new to me. I had no idea what to do. So I went to a local bookstore here in Nina called Lions Books. And I talked to the gal who works there, Meredith, and she um, got me in touch with Little Creek Press here in Wisconsin at Mer Mineral Point. And Kristen Mitchell, she took the story and the illustrations and she put it together. She's a page designer. Mm -hmm. And so that's how it started. And I said, they look wonderful, Kristen, but how am I going to get it published? I don't know what to do. And she mm -hmm. took care of that. So wonderful, wonderful. So do you have the book? I know they're available on it's available on Amazon. Do you have the book in your local bookstore around you? Um, yes, it's in Lions Books. And I have sold books or given them probably over 400 books at this point. Um and right now, my book is at a nail salon in Nina. Um, I went in to have my nails done. And the gal, she said, oh, we have so many retired grandmothers that come in. Why not just let me sell your book? So along with the book, and I, it's a hardcover book that I'm selling. I know on Amazon, it's a soft cover. Um, I give away this little owl. Wonderful. So it's a little T.Y. owl. So so the kids can hang on to the owl while, while someone reads the story to them or if they tell the story. And also that makes a great Christmas gift set now that you get not only the book, but you get the owl as well. Now, I know we can get this on Amazon, but where do we get the owl and the hardcovered book? Do you have a, a site um, set up or something? No, the, the only place that is, is in Nina, Wisconsin at Lions Books or at this nail salon. I, I, like I said, Logan, this is all new to me. Yeah, well, um, that's a, it's a start. And, it's a start and it's a reason it's a to start. go to uh, Nina, Wisconsin. Right. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, I do have a, I've written a sequel to the story mm -hmm. it's called Rocky and Hoot. Mm -hmm. And that is being illustrated by Emily this winter. So she's, besides teaching school, she's illustrating this that story. And I'm hoping again to publish it maybe next summer. Well, this is all exciting stuff that's happening for you, which is really great. It's got to feel great to go from the classroom to the bookshelf to, you know, selling these little owls. And who knows where it could go? 
you know, once the book is out there, it's like a message in a bottle. It could wind (laughs) up anywhere. Would you like to see it made into like an animated feature or something? I don't know. I don't, wouldn't even know how to go about that. Yeah. Um, well, sure. I mean, it would be fun. I don't know if it would be very long, but probably somebody would embellish it a little bit. Sure. Add music here and there, that kind of stuff. You right. Know. Uh-huh. The story I of Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer isn't very long, but there's a great little <laughs> half hour cartoon that we watch every year, right? right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, you have written a terrific book. I think children of all ages, including parents, will love this story to read to their children time and time again. It's the kind of book that you might break out every Christmas to have an annual reading. It is written by Ginny Gilman. It is called The Christmas Stowaway. It is it is inspired by a true story. Happened back in 2020 when a owl was found living in that Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. Do you remember where the tree was from that year, Ginny? Um, upstate New York. So I upstate think that's usually where they, they find them, upstate New York. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, it's a great book. It's highly recommended. And Ginny, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you, Logan. It was really nice to meet you. I know probably you don't do too many children's books on your show, but um, I'm glad that you took a chance with me. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Yep. I love it. It's a beautiful book and it's got a great story. It's got great illustrations. And like I said, I can't wait to find some little kids to share it with this Christmas season because it's a terrific tale. Thanks again for joining us. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford thanking you for your time this time until next time on Spotlight. Thank you.